optical or reflective property of an ellipse is simply this. A ray of light that starts at one focal point after reflecting off of the ellipse will go through the other focal point. Let's denote the focal points by f1 and f2 and the point on the ellipse by p. By the definition of an ellipse, f1p plus f2p is constant, so that sum is the same for every point p on the ellipse. But that also means that the distance that the ray of light travels doesn't depend on where the point of reflection is. So, if there are multiple rays of light starting at one focal point at the same time, they will reach the other focal point simultaneously. We can also look at a light that shines in all directions. And if we connect all the frontmost points that the light has reached, we get what's called a wave front. We can look at the wave front on its own, and the entire wave front will reach the other focal point at one instant. This doesn't only apply to light waves, it also applies to sound waves. So if you ever find yourself in an elliptically shaped room, you can stand at one focal point, while someone else stands at the other focal point, and even if you whisper, they'd probably be able to hear you. Now, let's return to the case of a ray of light. For that, we'll need the law of reflection. Suppose we have a flat surface, and a ray of light reflects off of that surface. The angle between the normal and the incident ray is called the angle of incidence, and we'll denote it by theta i. The angle between the normal and the reflected ray is called the angle of reflection, and we'll denote it by theta r. The law of reflection states that the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection are equal. However, we'll use a different version of this law, and for us, the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection will be angles between the rays of light and the surface itself. And if a surface isn't flat, then we'll need the tangent at the point of reflection. In this case, the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection will be angles between rays of light and the tangent. The angle of incidence and the angle of reflection must be equal, regardless where the ray of light hits the surface, or whether the surface is convex or concave. Now, let's see how this applies to an ellipse. We'll again denote the point on the ellipse by p. We'll also need the tangent at p. To show that the ray of light from f1 after reflection at p goes through f2, we need to show that the angle between the tangent and f1p is equal to the angle between the tangent and f2p. For that, let's introduce another point which we'll call q. If q is on the ellipse, then f1q plus f2q is, by the definition, equal to some constant value. And in the previous video, we showed that that constant value is equal to 2a. The following we won't show in this video, so you can try it for yourself. And that is when q is inside the ellipse, f1q plus f2q is less than 2a, and when q is outside the ellipse, f1q plus f2q is greater than 2a. In particular, we are interested when q is on the tangent. If q doesn't coincide with p, then q is outside the ellipse, so f1q plus f2q is greater than 2a. And since p is on the ellipse, then f1p plus f2p is equal to 2a. We'll introduce another point, f2 prime, such that f2 and f2 prime are symmetric with respect to the tangent. And let's connect f2 prime with p and q. Now, f2q is equal to f2 prime q, and f2p is equal to f2 prime p. And we can substitute that in the two expressions that we already have. So, f1q plus f2 prime q is greater than 2a, and f1p plus f2 prime p is equal to 2a. 
which means that the shortest path from f1 to f2 prime goes through p. Since the shortest path is a straight line, then p is on the line segment f1 f2 prime. Finally, let's denote the angle between the tangent and f1p by theta1, the angle between the tangent and f2 prime p by theta2, and the angle between the tangent and f2p by theta3. Now, theta1 and theta2 are equal as opposite angles, and theta2 and theta3 are equal because they are symmetric with respect to the tangent, which means that theta1 is equal to theta3. Now, according to the law of reflection, a ray of light that starts at f1 after reflection at p will indeed go through f2.